All right, shroomies and shroomettes, it's about that time. We're going to do a harvest on one of our mono tubs, and we are also going to be taking some spore prints. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> Yes, sir. Shroomies, shroomettes. This is a very special grow for your boy. This is my very first cross, and it is actually proven that it worked. We have done it. Success, success, success. Now, I'm going to go ahead and clone that one with the little dollop on the top because that is what we are looking for for future grows now i'm not going to get into any specifics on what we use to cross because youtube is probably going to kick me in the ass just for having this video up so nothing will be said about that but i do want to point out all three of these tubs are different genetics but they were spawned on the same exact day which just goes to show you that some genetics are way more aggressive and fast producers than others. So if your tub is not taking off, just give it some time and I'm sure something will happen. All right, so if you guys are just tuning in and you did not catch the last video we dropped, for this grow, we are growing in a micropose mono tub, medium size. And we are using three pounds of grain, the grain of choice, popcorn. And we are using about 1.2 to 1.3 pounds of cocoa core only. Now we're going to go ahead and grab our curved scissors. Now we use the curved ones because they're able to get down level with the with our substrate and the base of our fruit so we can go ahead and try to get the cleanest cuts we can you don't want to remove too much of your substrate because then you leave some grain exposed and that can lead to contamination the main focus of today's video is to grab some spore prints but i also want to clone the best looking fruits that I have. And the genetic line that we're looking for is the one that has that white mycelium cap. So the cross that I used did have this, but I also used an albino. So that's how I know that these fruits proved out. They don't look like their parent genetics at all, besides that little cap. So if you guys have some knowledge, you might know what we use for this cross. As you can see with this group here, we did have some substrate to come up with the fruits, but it's not really that much of a worry because we're not pulling out chunks. You don't want to pull out chunks. When you pull out chunks, you leave grains exposed and that can lead to contamination. I must stress this point because you want more flushes. So in order to do so, be very gentle. You can also use the twist and pull method like I did just now. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna use this cap right here for our spore print. It's a decent size, it's fully opened. We're gonna place it face down on our clean foil. And we're gonna go ahead and grab the next one because these are the two biggest ones that I would like to create spore prints from. again face down on our foil and i'm gonna go ahead and cover that just for right now but there are a couple more steps that we're gonna take and i'm also going to do a clone for you guys as well so let me go ahead and harvest these bad boys up and then we will proceed to our next step let's go
squat so we removed all fruits from our cake now we're gonna go ahead and add our water now i do not flush any of my cakes it's way too much of a hassle and it can lead to a possible contamination so what i do is i just spray a lot of water onto the top of our cake now you may notice that some of your mycelium turns blue once it comes in contact with the water don't worry about that it's just some bruising and also you want to make sure you remove every single piece of fruit because if you don't that fruit will then absorb water die and cause wet rot then you will have some contamination so make sure you remove all fruit Go ahead, spray your lid so that way we can have a nice humid area for more fruit to then reappear. Place your lid back on and reset. Nice and simple, good to go. All right, shroomies and shroomettes. We are finally able to clone the prettiest fruit out of the bunch. So what you want to do is you want to crack that thing right down the middle. Just as such. Now, the reason why we clone is because we want to try to recreate this look that we have in future genetics down the line. And cloning is the best way to do that. So go ahead, grab your sterile blade cut a small section out of the middle of the stipe doesn't have to be too big we just need a very small piece of material we transfer that right onto our agar dish quick and easy takes very little time but it's very effective now usually i would go ahead and sterilize my blade and then go back in but since we used one time and this is fresh we're moving pretty quick we're just going to go ahead cut another piece out a very small piece right out of the middle once again transfer that onto our agar dish bada bing bada boom you're done just like that let's go how you doing look at that right there hopefully we can recreate this look over and over and over again because this is very pretty i'm very proud of this cross if you guys have any ideas on what this cross may be drop it in the comments below tell me how you really feel now for our final step for our spore prints what you're gonna do is we're gonna take our water and we're just gonna have a single droplet onto the cap. Now this will send signals to it that it's time for it to drop spores and it just makes the process a lot easier and a lot quicker. And those are done, simple as that. Now before we shut down the flowy, we just wanna make sure we wrap up our plates and we're just gonna leave them on the counter for a few days. yes sir it's been about two days you can see the mycelium is starting to take back over that cap and what i like to do is i'll just put the foil right on top of the spore print fold down the edges making sure that i press it tightly so that it's sealed and you're good to go you can go ahead leave them like this put them in a folder put them inside of card uh, holders or you can put them in a Ziploc bag and store them for later. As long as they are tightly sealed like this, you should be good. And here's a quick snapshot of flush number two. Um, I didn't video this, obviously. It was starting to drop some spores, so I just kind of wanted to hurry up and get the harvest done. But here goes flush number two. Well, I was able to get some video of flush number three, and here it goes right now. I didn't do any cloning, which I should have for this little weird one right here, but um, just press for time. But overall, definitely a great grow. 
I'm super hyped about this because I was able to get about five flushes out of this, believe it or not. Beautiful, beautiful fruits we have. Super proud of this. Like I said, this was my very first cross, so definitely holds very dear to my heart. Now we have nothing on this one right here. Um, this is about my third or fourth time trying to run this specific type of genetics and we got nothing, so it is what it is. And for the third, we have some fruits finally. And at the current time, this grow is actually doing pretty good. Maybe I'll drop a photo of how massive this one fruit right there is. I have yet to do a harvest on this, kind of just letting it do its thing. Like I said, some genetics are slower than others. And as you can see, this proves it right here. And my little project, man, it didn't have nothing going on with it. I've got some mycelium, but it seems to just stall out. Have everything wrapped up in our Spider Farmer four tier LED grow tent which is always beautiful to have on display. And I appreciate y'all for rocking with your boy. Y'all be easy. Peace.